Welcome back to Geneva and WISIS Forum 2022. And with me is Jonathan Chen. Jonathan is the Deputy uh, Permanent Representative to the UN for Singapore. Welcome and congratulations on your prize in the data management category. Can you tell me all about it? Thanks so much, Sam. Um, personally delighted to be here. And I must say that Singapore is extremely honored to receive this uh, prestigious award on behalf of ASEAN member states. Um, I think this is especially since uh, the WISIS prize is a very important process towards uh, recognizing global um, efforts that contribute to sustainable and inclusive development of ICTs. Mm -hmm. And I think this is uh, very relevant because you know, we are seeing a world that is increasingly um, digitized. And I think more than ever, it is necessary to ensure that the benefits of digital economy are um, enjoyed by the broadest number of people possible. I think key to this really is um, enhancing um, regional and international uh, cooperation, um, the opportunity to learn from good examples, exchange um, best practices. And I think this is really what the, the WISIS Prize uh, encapsulates. So today I was hoping to share a bit more about ASEAN's digital context. Yes, please, please and, do. Yeah. And also um, the background between uh, behind the ASEAN um, data management framework yes. and the model contractual clauses. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> so, what, what specific um, sustainable development goals were you were you seeking to address with the project? Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> or what range of goals? Presumably, there were quite a lot, were there? Quite a lot of ambitions for, yeah, for were, your there project. Were, there were quite a lot of ambitions, mm. but I, I think really um, just to set the context, when you're talking about ASEAN, which Singapore finds itself at the the heart of, um, it's really a region with uh, Im immense potential. Um, we are talking about a 650 uh, million strong market and 3.2 trillion um, regional GDP, which makes us uh, the fifth, currently the fifth largest um, global market. And I think by 2030, we are on track to be the fourth. And um, on top of that, I think 61% of our population uh, is currently under the age of 35. Mm. And they really embrace digital technology. So if you, if you drill down a, a little more to specifically uh, digital economy, I think that the um, uh, prognosis is also very positive. During COVID-19, we um, onboarded uh, 60 million new uh, internet consumers, making us the third largest internet base um, with 400 million uh, internet users. And on top of that, um, you know, our digital economy is uh, expected to hit uh, 1 trillion in terms of regional GDP. Uh, by 2030. Um, so there is recognition amongst uh, the ASEAN member states that it's really key to um, come together and focus on digital cooperation. And that's precisely why we are also looking at uh, commencing um, negotiations on a, a ASEAN digital uh, economy framework agreement uh, by 2025. And I think if you drill down a little more, um, there is great awareness that uh, data um, is a core building block of the digital economy. Um, the key really is to unlock its uh, potential, um, but I don't think that this is easy because uh, for data to have value, it has to be transformed um, into insights, mm. um, applications or services, and this is typically found within um, individual companies. Um, and so if you're talking about a data-driven economy, the challenge here really is creating that uh, ecosystem, uh, the network of, um, that allows um, the uh, access and process of high quality data. And the challenge here really is that um, it's, it's typically located in different organizations and across uh, borders. So one, there is a need to better use data so that companies are able to make uh, smart decisions and scale up both domestically and internationally. But I think more critically, there is a need to uh, ensure that these companies have the capabilities to um, manage, process and transfer data across borders safely. Um, and I think it's really key for the ASEAN region because um, 95 to 99% of our SMEs um, are data driven and they um, 
and they and they form uh, more than half of our uh, economy. So what really uh, the DMF, um, the data management framework, and the MCCs do is provide a very simple toolkit, uh, easily up inter implementable toolkit um, that allows companies to create a governance framework um, to manage personal data um, and also uh, include terms and conditions in their agreements that allows the safe and legitimate transfer of data um, across borders. So there's a lot of potential um, in, this, in, in these initiatives, and they're also part of our um, digital framework um, goal for 2025. And um, as I mentioned earlier, they will lay the foundation for our um, digital economy framework agreement. There's such uh, interesting insights and uh, impressive statistics. And congratulations on the recognition for your projects. Jonathan Chen, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much.